now. My name is Lois, and I'm Dean's mother. And I will update you on some of this uh, Freemason stalking. I had a video before, I guess it got erased. Anyways, this time my son thought he had a friend. His name was Willie Konecki, something like that. And he brought him home because the two of them were supposed to go to work the next day. Only Dean got called and Willie didn't. So he stayed at our place uh, for a week, actually. But during that week, he was nice to start with, okay? He, he treated me pretty good, like a young person should treat an older person. And then he started sexually attacking me. I guess that's what you would call it. Um, well, I woke up one night, he was crawling across my bed and uh, scared the living daylights out of me. And plus he was saying dirty um, sexual things to me. I wouldn't even want to repeat it because it was so disgusting. And I'm not used to being treated that way because I consider myself a respectable person. And um, anyways, uh, he would try anything he could uh, to get close to me and he'd accidentally uh, on purpose touch me in the breast. And uh, he kept insinuating that him and I should sleep together. And let's see, uh, this went on for a while. I was I was afraid to, uh, I was scared of him actually. And beings as we're surrounded by Freemasons and stalkers, there wouldn't be anybody to help me here because that's what, who our neighbors are is stalkers. And uh, so even the landlady seems like one too, the way she acts. So anyway, we're living in kind of a real scary situation here. Um, anyway, I phoned Dean after I put up with this, like I, I prayed and asked God to help me. Believe me, prayer helps. And he must have put up a barrier because Willie couldn't get past it. I mean, he could have raped me. He's strong enough and everything. But he couldn't get past a barrier. He just kept uh, talking about sleeping with me and everything. So anyways, I finally phoned my son. And I told him what was going on. And so my son came home. And uh, I told Willie, I said, my son's coming home. So uh, that, then Willie got his stuff and took off. I'm kind of shortening this because I'm not very good at speaking anyway. But, but anyways, Willie took off and he was supposed to go to Ontario to see his brand new baby that he had made with this woman. And I told him that he should go and try to, to make things work with her instead of bothering other people. And uh, I mean, look at me. I'm old lady. Like, I mean... <laughs> So anyway, I mean, I can't imagine some young girl. Anyway, I'm having trouble with that one. Okay, um, so anyways, let's see. i got to get my brains thinking here. Um, anyways, Dean did come home, and Willie had gone by that time. Because I think he was a little scared of Dean. I don't know if anyway. And so then I met him not very long ago. He, he About a week or so later. He got off the number nine bus that I was getting on to. So then we knew he was back. So when we reported that to police, we'd reported earlier to them too. So we reported that he was back and there was no follow up or anything. And they've just, the police have just ignored us. Like, so um, this, this Willie, I mean, he's obviously, um, a, we figure he's a stalker. That he was stalking me because that's all we have around here stalkers you ran across him twice right yeah i ran i ran across him twice on that number nine bus he was it was 5 30 in the morning i have to go early to work that's the kind of job i have right now and uh so i ran across him again and uh but nothing happened uh, no incident to report there but i put up with him for a whole week here and we realized he was stalking us, that he's a stalker, just like the rest of them. So that's my story, and I thank God that he never touched me. I really thank God for that, because God answers prayer. So everybody remember that. He does answer prayer. Well, they called on And that's about all I have to but say. But you escaped him. 
Okay, so that's all I have to say is is that.